God's word. It is a seed, and that does have an effect in their life. And I believe that, I've always believed this. I don't care what, if today is the, the fifth or the twentieth, it doesn't matter. If I pick Proverbs 20th because the day's the twentieth, and I pick out a verse, I believe God knew this day was coming. I believe he knew I'd pick that verse, and I'm going to slide it under that door, and it's going to have an effect in you. Now, what I used to do, we'd drive to, drive to school every morning. It was 31 miles to school. We lived way out and way out in the country. And so everybody get in the suburban, and we're heading off to school. Six kids back there. Some got up on time. Some didn't. Some had breakfast. Some didn't. Some put their makeup on. Some haven't. Some got their homework. Some didn't. Some got it, no, no two people were the same, you know. And so we take off. And so this is when I do family devotions. I always did family devotions in the suburban going to school. So I always carried that big old paperback one-year Bible. And I'd say, what's today? You know, somebody said, well, it's the eighth. And I'd throw it over across the seat. Re Proverbs 8. Read the first three verses. And somebody's always talking back. They were never a happy bunch usually uh, early in the morning. They're trying to get ready for school. You know, they got thoughts and paperwork and makeup, and they're trying to still get dressed. And uh, I said, read, read the first three verses. Not now, Dad. I'm doing it. Shut up. I'll pull a suburban over. Read the first three verses. I'll pull this thing over the side of the road right now. <laughs> and they'd usually read it, and they'd read it mad sometimes and throw it at somebody else. I said, next three verses, read it. And you'd always have a holy one in the bunch. Somebody, you know, got up on time, got dressed, had their homework, had breakfast, and they read their scripture, and they feel real holy. So the, the Lord said, blah, 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 blah. Of course, everybody hated that one, you know. They, <laughs> the righteous suffer persecution. To the. But I remember several Thanksgivings ago, one of my kids said, Dad, because we, we go around the table, and it seems sort of trivial, I guess, but uh, what are you thankful for? And one of them said, I I'm thankful that you taught us to read our Bible when we didn't feel like it. And I thought about that, and I thought, that is really good, because that's exactly what we did. Because people, of course, teach on family. How do you do family devotions? I said, we don't have family devotions like you think, you, you know, I'm sh where, you know, the house is clean, and everybody's bathed, and homework's done, candles are lit, and <laughs> we're singing Kumbaya down there in the living room together. <laughs> and somebody says, Dad, could we could read our Bibles tonight? <coughs> oh, I don't know, but it's getting kind of late, but give you 10 minutes. Could we do 15? No, 10, that's all you get tonight. The only time we ever read our Bibles is when hell landed. <laughs> I'm not kidding, man. If something's not going right, shut up and get your Bible. Shut up, sit down and get your Bible. And I just make them read. I'm not going to preach you a sermon. It's not me, it's God. You don't want to hear your daddy. I have no punch. I'm going to let you hear God. And I don't care what I'd pick. It'd always be something that'd come out good, you know, just something to make them think or just change their mind. Now, let me tell you how you control your thought life. This is a challenge for a lot of people. You know, you shouldn't let thoughts bounce through your brain like a ping pong ball on a concrete floor. The Bible says in Philippians, think on these things, whatever is lovely, just, honest, praiseworthy, virtuous, of a good report. Think on these things. Don't think on the other things. Think on these things. So what's the matter with the other things? The other things are trying to exalt themselves against the knowledge of God's word. Cast stupid thoughts out. Don't just sit there and let them bounce around. That's how the devil gets inside of you. That's how he starts messing.